Hi, Amanda Armstrong, and welcome to the back office Teardown Lab. It's Friday night. I am bored, so I'm just having a little bit of a clear out. And I found some interesting objet, which gave me an idea. So you can see I've been formulating an idea, but I thought I'd just make a video while I'm doing it, really. It's just for me to mess around with. So I found this uh, power lead, which uh, I'd cut off. Um, so I've basically tin the ends so we use it and put a fuse in. I always try to take the fuse out make sure someone doesn't kill themselves by plugging it in if you've got kids in the house. Um, I found the pack of these diodes. Now these are just beefy looking diodes, just exactly like the little ones that you usually have, but just massive versions. And I thought, well, I'm never really going to use these for anything. <laughs> Look how massive they are. So at least I could uh, play with them in a um, you know circuit or something. So that's why I've got them there. And it's just basically an experiment. You can see it's involving mains power. It's involving diodes. So I think we're going to try to make one of these. And you remember them from a previous video. It's the full wave bridge rectifier. And remember, I know not, I know not of analog electronics, really. I mean, I barely know anything about digital electronics, but analog, it's all black art to me. But, you know, I thought this is how you learn. You experiment and do things. But if you're at home watching this, probably don't bother doing this because, of course, you know, I'm doing it because so you don't have to. That's probably the best way of looking at it. Of course this isn't plugged in and really make sure it's not bloody plugged in because you will be dead. So that's the uh, disclaimer, that's the warning in front of this video. If you get things wrong doing this and you're careless, like I often am careless, you know that. I'm harassed. I'm harassed and rushed all the time. Um, you will die. Got it? You will, you will definitely die. So don't mess with this stuff. Right. So first things first, I'm going to basically I want to build my full wave bridge rectifier there on this piece of skirting board that I found in the garage. And I'm just going to construct it between all these nails. That's my idea with the whole nails, making my own little sort of pin board really. And I thought it'd be kind of a bit safer, you see, to have all these nails to put it through. I managed to smash a panel pin straight into my very sore thumb. That Remember, I broke that all up on the uh, end of last year. I slammed it into a car door somehow, like a molly brain. And it seems to be sensitive to getting hit by a hammer for some bizarro reason, just as the nail had grown out again. There, so that's all the noise out of the way. I'll put my hammer down. So I don't know yet how quite to uh, hook these up. I'm hoping we can bend the wires around and then uh, sort that out. And then I thought what we could do is just, just measure it, really. This is just really use this for measuring um, the mains voltage on stuff. And going, ooh, look, mains voltage. And then uh, putting it all away, probably. However maybe we'll have a little competition a little patron competition and you can win my pin board <laughs> you can win my deadly pin board and mains lead if that attracts you so we've got that there we're gonna go that, that away and then we're gonna go this away and I oh wow that's that's sharp <laughs> and I'm gonna turn my soldering iron up actually you can hear it in the corner beeping away I'm gonna turn that right up to maximum because we're going to need an awful lot of heat. So it's at 480 degrees C now. Vaporising its tip as we speak. Look at that. That's quite good, isn't it? That's quite good. The old woods is a uh, insulator, of course. If you are thinking of doing similar, don't do it on a baking sheet or something. And if you're doing it on plastic, even then be wary. Woods generally safe. But I'm kind of worried about the... Uh, this paint finish. I don't know what's going to go on with that. Hopefully nothing. Let me just get this one here while I can access it nicely. These, look at these archery forceps. They are really worth their weight in gold. You can see how bloody useful they are for so many things. Let's go on the outside, give ourselves a little bit more room. So I don't know what uh, you could do with mains level DC, what kind of projects you have. You could use it for charging up a massive capacitor and then belting it out and electrocuting yourself, so be careful. 
Um, but I'm sure there's there's you know things, experiments to be had. You could uh, use it for. It's quite dangerous, but you could use it for uh, electroplating something. And that was in one of the patron videos, if you recall. Uh, something I wanted to do this year was electroplate. We definitely don't need this kind of voltage, but maybe if you were doing some sort of industrial scale electroplating, you'd want um, mains type voltage. But again, I don't know anything really about electroplate until we try it. So you never know, it might be a viable option for us. Maybe if I've got a fat cap somewhere, we might try adding a capacitor to this circuit and seeing what happens. But we have to be careful because it's one of those big old caps, let's say one of those ones that's rated to have many hundred volts, um, it will store that. So you could get a bloody jolt off it. Right, well that's the essential stuff there done. So what I'm going to do is, because I'm just going to solder these joints together. Again, we got this nice and hot if you recall. In fact, let's use, we've got it, let's use some flux. I'm just going to put a little dash little bit of flux on each one. Yeah, it's like proper brazing, isn't it, this? It's like we're making a stained glass window. Right, that'll do. I need to get myself a fluxing brush or something. I don't know yet. Oh, that's not a bad idea. I mean, I know I half-jokingly said fluxing brush, but a little brush might just be the, the right thing for that. I'm just going to push this down. There we go. So it's all in contact. Now get in there. Come on now. Heat. Give us some heat, boy. Yes. That works well. That worked really well. I'm going to show you that after. I'll zoom in on that feature. You can see how well it actually did take. Let's see if we can see this one. I know it's top down. Better than nothing, eh? Ooh, yes. Very satisfactory, actually. That came out very satisfactory indeed. Just like uh, doing your plumbing, really. Get your flux on. Get your copper pipe in place. Looks like it's even soldering to the uh, panel pins. Good. That was jolly easier than I thought. If you look there at the angle too, you can see it's it's nicely done, very nice. He's done a good job, that lad. Right. So now we have our mains wire again, keeping the actual plug elsewhere. So if you recall from our previous video, we have the AC coming in here, and then you'll have the DC coming out there. So we're going to put one end up here. This wire is really awful, by the way. There's something horrible about this flex. It's really cheap and nasty, because I think some of these power leads you get from the Far East are not really rated properly, I don't think. They're just they're just made with joke components. We don't want that falling off the desk, so I'm gonna just put, I've got I've got a tape reel you can't see in the corner. So that's it really. We can plug that in. Let's get all our apparatus ready. We can go on have to mess with that. We've got our multimeter here and it has a mains range, I hope. Yes, AC. There we go. So we've got it on AC and we've got our little probes. I'm going to be careful, of course, because they're, although they're insulated, they're well worn. We definitely don't want to shock ourselves. We just definitely do not want to give ourselves a little shock. So I'm going to plug it in right now. Three, two, one. In it goes. So it is in. The circuit should be live. So let me just unwrap these. If we measure from here and here, you can see on the meter we have 241.9 volts. Now I'm going to leave it in the AC range for fun. and We're going to measure here and here, which should be the DC component. I think we will get a slight, yeah, you see you're going to get like a slight kind of ripple. Let's put that now into DC mode. There we go. And let's see what we get. And there you go, 217 volts DC. That's scary, isn't it? So I've got it all unplugged again. Let's double check. It is all unplugged. So what I was going to do here is I'm going to put a resistor on. I thought, let's just continue the game, really. Let's put on the resistor. I believe, though, if you're going to use 
the capacitor smoothing it out and everything like that you have to really start thinking about inductors and stuff and that's definitely starting to push me out of my comfort zone I don't know how many Enries you have you know it's the sort of thing you add I've even had to wind them and all of this stuff for the circuit according to the specs but I don't know how they work again you should just probably give the time and have a read of a book at some point but god life's too short sometimes isn't it right so I don't even know the value of that resistor but you know this is how we learn things or learn nothing right so that resistor is a 0.28 mega ohm isn't that lovely that sounds great right so we're going to put ourselves back in the voltage range back into dc and then plug us back in let's see what we get so there's no load there so if we could do the calculation right there we could see with a bit of load on there what the sort of current we can have and maybe we can get it to try to drive something more sensible right so i've hooked up an led let's plug that in see what happens covering my face Woohoo! the led glows one of those yellowy leds they're sort of a weird color aren't they the old yellowy led who wants one of those so it's going pretty steady and we're going to measure the voltage and there you go 1.8 volts so groovy so it's a pretty uh, elaborate way of illuminating an led but it does work and if we turn off the light there you go so you've got now a really nice led circuit now the thing is with this you don't actually need a uh, full wave for an led of course so you you know what's happening when you're running these things i'm going to be cautious not to touch that too much um so you've got the AC coming in like this, yeah, you've got your AC wave coming in. So if you imagine after um, full wave rectification, you're basically turning it into that. Yeah. But if you've got just one diode in, I think you effectively, I'll have to think about this a little bit, but um, you'll be getting that part, but not that part, and that part. And then not, I don't think you're going to negative. So um, effectively that. So the LED is going to flicker, but it's going to be flickering so fast at like 50 hertz. You're not going to be noticing, well, 50 hertz, 25 hertz. <laughs> 25 hertz? Um, either way, you, they say there's places you can go to get more information on that. I could probably do that before doing a video on the subject, but it's not really a video on the subject. It's just me having a play. So there. The most elaborate way to uh, illuminate an LED from the mains, it seems. Um, there's all sorts of things you'd have there. You could just you could put like if you're if you're using this genuinely though in some sort of power supply or something, there'll be um, chokes, capacitors, lots of extra components to make sure that that output is really um, clean. And you've got all sorts of calculations from the main stuff because you've got that sine wave, so you can have some sort of root mean squared stuff. There's there's a bit of maths behind it, to be honest. But it's well well trodden territory. You know, there's gonna be a lot of information about that. Um interestingly enough though, <laughs> um we do have this that I built quite recently. I'm gonna pump like this by the way. I'm just cognizant I might rest my hands on it. Um we built this not so long ago, and that was that quite nice uh, kit uh, that gave us a nice power supply so this would take in this is an LM317T you can just about read in there um, voltage regulator so it's a bit similar to your uh, regular voltage regulators that you have that you have and love you know you've used these in the in the past with fixed voltages so in your um, Commodore 64 or Atari ST or whatever you'll find them they'll be the uh, what they call LM302805 whatever the 5 volt ones the 12 volt ones and this is a variable one that's why it's got this extra bump but you can see this circuit actually has in there I'll zoom in this has your uh, full wave bridge rectifier so it's expecting an AC in here and then it's giving you your DC out so it's already got the main chunks of this these four basically here like that plus you can see your uh, capacitors a few li little capacitor down there and then a big electrolytic another electrolytic so on some on the input i think some on the output in fact 
just looking here so you've got your rectification so uh, again this is off so you've got the uh, input coming in here and it's going through these are your uh, bridge rectifier here and you can see then that's sort of running off you've got two two of them here are your DC minus effectively that's your ground plane here coming around and then you've got your positive here coming right up there through that um, big electrolytic and then through your uh, power regulator and let's have a look at that that's basically going all the way around um, so if that's the input then this is probably the output here yeah you can see it coming through and that's going to be going to your plus yeah that's the plus there that's your output from your, your regulator and then you've just got all the other bits and pieces here which are really just to do with adjusting that because it's an adjustable regulator so you're just playing with it um, so you've got your output here and you've got your ground because it's just the ground plane so interestingly enough though does this ground plane connect to that ground plane I'm, uh, quite, yeah, I'm curious now I know we're going off piste a little bit but when you're curious you're curious let's put it in buzzy buzzy beat mode it doesn't does it hmm most interesting. We'll have to play with that some. Hmm. Yes. Oh no, it does. It does. It does. Hooray! The world makes sense, even for a numbskull like me. So, the only dance, the only reason we can't use this sort of input that you know you can't put the main straight into here, of course, because that um, uh, LM317 uh, is expecting like a maximum of like 20 volts or something AC, not 240. So you could get, uh, you could have a transformer here to try to get a um, reduction there. You know, you might just do a 10 times reduction, get it as 24 um, volts AC. So you'd have a transformer into that and you have a nice little switchy power supply there and you don't need all this. You don't really need uh, the rectification on that end. You could have it there, have it here, wherever you want. In fact, it's almost tempting, isn't it, just to get a 5 volt reg as part of this circuit and see what you can do with it. But I think we'll just end up blowing up. So there, hopefully that's been slightly interesting to you. It's certainly been uh, interesting to me. And uh, I think I probably ought to... Uh, <laughs> I think I ought to probably make this safe by removing this part of my apparatus and uh, leaving it there. Um, answers on a postcard. If you're in the UK and you would like <laughs> me to post you this, um, uh, if you're a pat patrons first, I guess, patrons get first dibs, um, ping me on Discord and say, yeah, give me that block of wood and I'll pop that in the box and send that to you. As ever, thanks for watching.